What's going on, YouTube? This is Dave Larkes Outdoor TV. Here's the second installment of the Wedge Shallow Water Anchor Bill. Right now, you see me cleaning up the uh, first uh, control arm, and if you see in the distance over there, my CNC plasma table is cutting out the uh, the holes for the second control arm. And so I'm now, I'm now I'm starting to clean up the the first control arm, getting all the burrs off of it and everything, getting it ready to uh, be installed. So I'm just doing some cleanup right now, and the plasma table is cutting out the octagon holes in the other control arm, and these holes are just simply there so that water will shed either easier and also to reduce weight of the control arms. And so that's what you see going on right here. Excuse the shop. I know it's junky, but I've since cleaned it up. I'm wiping down everything right now, getting all the dust and all the uh leftovers from the plasma cutting, getting all the plasma dust off of it and everything, and the grinding dust off of it and everything from what I've done. And I'm also cleaning out the inside, getting all the the residue, making sure everything is cleaned and ready to go. Now you see me cleaning up the second control arm. I've done I'm done with the first and cleaning up the second control arm, getting all the burrs off of it so I can have a smooth finish on it, get everything ready to go, flipping it over, make sure both sides are done. And now I'm sitting here thinking about how and what I need to do as far as getting them set up, make sure everything is ready to go because I'm getting ready to make them up. I still have a few birds in there. I want to make sure I get them all off so to make sure that everything is ready to go. So when I put them together, I don't have to come back and uh, try to knock out birds. So that's what you see now. And I'm using a flat chisel to knock them out so that everything is clean and ready to go. If you have not thought about it, please like, subscribe, comment below, tell somebody about us. Cleaning this one up also. Please comment below and share this vi these videos for those who may want to do the same thing, want to create their own anchors. I will also put in the description below uh, uh, for some up and coming videos. Here you see me making them up right now, getting them ready to uh, <clears throat> be assembled. And I'm sitting on top sitting one on top of the other to make sure that they are the same width and make sure nothing changed because as you know, when metal is heated up, it does change. And so I want to make sure that nothing changes on these to make sure that everything is good. So when I get ready to put them together, I don't have to worry about that concern. Now I'm cleaning up my workspace, getting all the birds off, getting all the debris off. So when I sit them down, everything sits flat, everything sits level. And now what you see here, these are the, the upper connecting links for the wedge shallow water anchor. And these are also cut out on my CNC plasma table. And these I designed myself. So I looked at photos, I looked at pictures online, I looked at other shallow water anchors, and this is the design I came up with myself. And I wanted to make it as simple as possible. And so now I'm matching them up on the upper and lower control arm so that I can match up the holes to see exactly where I need to put them so that when they, uh, operate they operate correct <clears throat> excuse me correctly and what you see there is a lower connecting link and that's one side now these are this is one side of each one so they have not been put together yet as one assembly i cut them out on the cnc plasma table and they're actually separate assemblies right now they're separate sides so once i put them together i'm gonna weld them up after they are connected together so that they all will match up and they all will operate freely and they all will operate together in one complete unit. And so that's what you see here. I'm setting them up to be to drill the first holes. And now you are moving over to the uh, drill press and I've drilled them out. So now the, the holes have been drilled out and now I'm just wiping off the excess and cleaning off the burrs and everything from the drilling process. And now I'm getting ready to match them up again and lay them down so that when I put them together, I can bolt the uh, upper and lower connecting assemblies to them so that I can mark out the hold on the second control arm. And 
And so here it is. I just changed the view so you can see it from a different view of me placing the, the uh, upper and lower uh, connecting connection assemblies on there. So as you can see, I'm getting ready to, I'm drilling, really what I'm doing is put a self-tapping screw in one of the holes to secure it to that, just to mark it. And now once I've marked it and everything, now I can come back and I can drill it out. And now you see me taking it, what you saw in the previous step, me taking it over to the drill press. And this is just showing you how I'm, I'm drilling it out at the drill press to get the holes in it, is what you're seeing right now. And now I'm setting it up to drill it out on the drill press. And the drill bit I'm using right now is a 3 8 drill bit to drill out the hole because I use 3 8 bolts to uh, secure these and connect them together. But what I end up also doing is I, I drill them out to a half inch. I use a 3 8 at first and then I drill them out to a half inch. And the reason why I did that is because the, the, uh, the vinyl insert that I put in there, the vinyl insert is half inch thick. It's a diameter of a half inch, although it has a 3 8 hole. And now what you see me doing is, is raising it up because I want, I want the holes to match up and be straight and square. And I do this on both both ends to make sure that the holes match up on both sides so that nothing is off and nothing is kinked and everything is straight and square. And now you see me doing the other side. And now I've drilled them out and everything, so I'm getting ready to clean them up and knock off the burrs and everything to make sure that everything sits flush inside. And so now you're going to see me cleaning all the excess oil and the oil that I use and all I just simply use some WD-40 for cutting fluid because it doesn't take that long to drill these out. And now I'm getting ready to match them up <clears throat> so that I can put the sec to mark the second hole, the other holes in the other control arm. And as you can see here, that black vinyl fitting you see, that's the one that's a half inch thick on the on the outside diameter, and it just snaps in place because the hole is a half inch, and it just snaps in place. And the hole, the in the the uh, the inner diameter hole of this vinyl fi uh, flat washer uh, is three eighths. And now you see me looking for the bolts and everything. I'm putting the bolts in for the three eighths bolts. And those are vinyl washers also, but they are flat washers. The vinyl washer in there, in the inside of the hole, is a, actually what they call the, uh, uh, it has a lip in it. And so those are the vinyl washers that I use to put inside. And the vinyl washers that I use for the outside are just simply vinyl flat washers. And each hole gets one, and I'm showing you a picture up there of what the washer actually looks like, so you'll know what to look for when you go to your hardware store, whether you go, and these washers I got from uh, Ace Hardware. I got these from Ace Hardware, and these are the ones that I put in there, to include the white washers you see on the table right there, I got from Ace Hardware. So I try to make all of these, uh, everything is locally sourced. I didn't order these off of uh, online. I just locally sourced these and I found these at Ace Hardware. So you can build these without ordering it online. You can go and you can get them online uh, at your uh, local uh, hardware store. If you have an Ace Hardware in your area, or maybe you have a Lowe's that may carry those or a Home Depot or what they call a big box store. And this is, you see me using, you see me using a two inch, um, 3 8 bolt, but I made it. I'm going to make a change in the future. Instead of having four bolts per end, I'm just going to go with one long 3 8 bolt that goes from one side to the other and have a, a spacer, a long spacer, 3 8 round uh, aluminum spacer in the inside 
so that it will not they won't collapse even though they don't collapse right now i think it'll be better to use just one long three three inch three eighths bolt to go from one side to the other and that's what i'm going to do in the future if i make another one if i make another uh version of this which i do plan to do i will use one long bolt instead of four two inch bolts or inch and a half depending on how long it is i think these boats are inch and a half i will just use one long three inch boat to go through all the way through instead of just using four boats and now what you see is i'm using i'm doing the other end and you just see me getting the boats prepared getting everything prepared to set up so that i can boat these on and once i boat these on I'm using um, uh, nylon, nylock nuts as locking nuts to lock these on. And here you see a picture of the nylock nut that I used, and that's what I used to lock them in. Because I, I want, and the reason why I'm using these nylock nuts is because I want to put, be able to put as much tension as I want, or as much, at least tension as as I want, to make sure that they are stiff, but not too stiff to where they cannot rotate. And also what you see now is you see I'm using a half inch flat washer because on that not on that nylon washer with the lip on it, there is a space there. So I use a half inch flat washer, as you can you'll see coming up. I'm gonna show you a picture. I use that nylon, half inch flat washer with this nylon nut to take up the space. So there is no space in there, so there is no play. And now you see me tightening it up so that they're they're snug, so that when uh I, I put them together. I don't have to worry about them moving and I end up coming back at the end and tighten them up even more. So make sure that there is no play so that when they're in operation, I don't have a whole lot of play in them. Not to mention when I transport them, because since this video, I've transported them and I've tightened up a little bit more to make sure there's there's no play so that the washers do not wear out. And so now what you see me doing is on the other end, I'm uh, connecting the, the top uh, connecting plate. For the left side doing the same exact process that i used on the bottom connecting plate for the left side using the flat washers and the nylon nuts now i'm getting ready to uh set these up to where now i can mark off the holes at the correct spacing and the correct distance. And that's what you see me doing here is marking out the hole so that I can go and drill the hole for the other, the lower control arm. And so what you see me doing now is, tight, is, 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 is tightening it up to make sure that everything is uh, lined up correctly so that when I go and I'm, I'm using this clamp to make sure that everything fits tight. So when they're in the stored position, I don't have to worry about a space or anything like that. Everything fits correctly. Everything is lined up correctly so that I don't have to worry about that. And now you see me putting everything together on the hole in the hole. And now I'm getting ready to mark where the hole is. I put the flat washer, the uh, nylon flat washer underneath. So make sure that everything lines up correctly and everything is level. And now I'm going to go through and mark the hole on the top. And if you can see right there in the corner, I have some vice grips clamping that to make sure that nothing moves because I didn't want anything to move when I clamped it at the top. So I used a vi set of vice grips to clamp the bottom clamp to make sure that nothing moves. So once I go and mark the top, everything will stay in the same position. And I mark the top and as well now I come in to mark the bottom. So everything is in the same position. So nothing moves. So I have to worry about coming back. Oh man, it moved. And now I got to come back and reposition it or the holes drilled in the wrong spot. So I, I was thinking ahead on that. And so that's why I did. You see the vice grips there. That's why I did what I did. Now I'm taking the clamp off because I'm getting ready to go over there and drill out the holes that I just marked.
now coming back because it was the same thing I did on the first one. So instead of I save you the time so you don't have to go through all that again. So I just went ahead and uh and and and, and what I'm doing now is marking them with a, a center punch to make sure that I I uh, drill in the correct spot in the center of the hole so that everything is correct. Now I've drilled them out to a half inch hole. So now all I gotta do is pop, snap in the, uh, the flange nylon nuts like I did on the first one. And all I have to do now is, re I'm well, in the inside, you see I have the burrs in there from the drilling process. So I'm just taking those burrs out. And now I got the, I've snapped in the, the nylon uh, flange nuts. As you can see, they stick out. If you see right here, they stick out internally that's where the half inch flat washer comes in to take up that space so there is no no space in there and there is no plate so i use that that half inch flat washer to take that space up and i also come on top of that with another three eighths flat washer to make sure that everything sits flush and there is no plate so there's actually two washers or four washers on each end of the uh up the upper and lower control arm so each 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 upper up each control arm has eight washers. They have four half inch flat washers and four three eighths flat washers to include on the exterior after we put the uh, flange washer on the nylon flange washer, it has a flat nylon washer. So here you see me putting them together, back together again to make sure that everything lines up. So I'm getting ready to bolt them up and bolt them together. Again, I'm using the inch and a half uh, three eighths bolts, and these are just regular inch and a half three eighths bolts that you get from your uh, big box stores, Lowe's or Home Depot. And I just slide them in because that's what I had at the time. I, w I didn't buy anything special. I didn't buy stainless steel. Well, actually, I did buy stainless steel bolts, but I ended up just using the regular old three eighths bolts. Uh, now you can use uh, stainless steel bolts. But I just use I used what I had because I wanted to show that you can use what you have to build these, and you don't need any special equipment. You don't need any special tools to build these other than a CNC plasma table. And I I built if you as you can see the lower uh, adjustment plate right there with the uh, octagon holes cut in it. That's a plate that I designed in a CAD program, and then I end up cutting them out on my CNC plasma table. And at the end of this video series, I will provide uh, the CNC files for this, the DXF files for these, because I'm going to update, the, update these. If you see how long they are, I'm going to shorten these down in the next build to where it also will remove some of the flex out of them because of the length. And even though I have cross, I weld cross braces in between these two cross braces, I'm going to shorten these down even shorter so that it'll take out the play also from the twisting action of these even in transit or in, in when they're in operation. So that's also going to reduce some of the weight off of them. Even though they're not that heavy as it is, I'm going to reduce the weight off of them there. Because what I wanted to do, I wanted to make sure that when I built these, that you can build these out of uh, locally sourced materials and not have to go and get aluminum. Because one of the things I found out it's hard to find aluminum plate because aluminum is not a uh, aluminum plate. It's not uh, your average use item. Even when you when you contact uh, metal suppliers, they do not carry aluminum in stock like that. It's a special order. So I use uh, locally sourced materials, and this material that I use is actually three sixteenths plate that I use to cut these out of. And so now I'm tightening them up and everything. And as you can see, they perfectly aligned. Um, I didn't have to worry about no misalignment issues. They are perfectly aligned. And so, and the angle that you see uh, cut in them is where the mounting plate goes to mount them to the mounting bracket that's already attached to my boat, which I also developed and manufactured myself. So now I'm flipping them over to show you I've done the bottom uh, connecting plates and now I'm doing the uh, top connecting plates. I've done one side and now I'm going to do the other side.
and I'm just moving it in position so you can see it better. So I'm putting the boat in. And as you can see how far the boat sticks out. So that's why I'm going to just go to one long three and a half inch boat because th these two are three inch because these three and a half inch boats because these tubes are two and a half inch square tubing that I use to make the up and lower control arm. So I'm going to go with a three and a half inch long, one long three and a half inch boat with a spacer in the middle to uh for the pivot boat. And now I'm tightening them up. And as you can see, they are perfectly aligned. Now I'm tightening it up the other one. And now I have both control arms, the upper and the lower control arms connected together. And what you're going to see me do here is I'm going to rotate them so you can see how they rotate. And now they rotate as one unit. As you can see, now they rotate as one unit and they're, and they are configured together and they are locked together. So now the only thing left for me to do, I have to put in the uh, supporting uh, brackets in the middle of the, 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 the bottom control arm. And that's going to be shown on the next video. But if you have not thought about it, please like, subscribe, comment below. Tell somebody about us. If you have any comments about how I may be able to do something different or better, please don't forget to let me know. This is David of Architects Outdoor TV. And until next time, join us on the next adventure. And I'm out.